Following the First World War, little attention is given to Germany until the mid-1930s and the rise of the Nazi Party. A few important events occurred during the interwar period that facilitated the rise of the Nazis, and in this episode, we'll be looking at one of these events, the French occupation of the Rügerbit. The Rhineland had been occupied by Allied troops in the immediate aftermath of the First World War. This occupation was meant for two reasons, one to help prevent a possible German attack, and to act as an assurance that Germany would pay the reparations demanded during the Treaty of Versailles. This occupation was up to the Rhine River, with four bridgeheads on the right end of the river, each with a 30 mile radius of occupation. The French occupied the southern end centered out of Mainz, the British in the northern section based out of Cologne, and the Belgians in the north based out of Ahin. The German right wing after the failed coup in 1920 massed a major propaganda campaign against the French, citing incidents such as the killing of nine civilians in Frankfurt as a French attempt to humiliate the German people. While these claims were largely racial and unfounded in nature, it did turn a section of not only the German public, but opinions abroad to garner more sympathy for Germany. The reparations imposed were massive for the German state, totaling nearly 800 billion in modern day dollars. This was reduced to 414 billion, but this debt was still massive, and the requirement for the reparation payments to be made partially with raw material meant that German factories were unable to function, and the economy suffered, further damaging the country's ability to pay. By late 1922, the German defaults on payments had grown so regular that the crisis engulfed the Reparations Commission. The French and Belgian delegates urged occupation of the Ruhr as a way of forcing Germany to pay more, while the British delegate urged a lowering of the payments. The French Premier Raymond Poincaré had been in favor of the occupation of the Rhineland, but proved rather reluctant to order the occupation. By December, the joint British-American-German opposition led him to order the occupation on January the 11th. The Ruger bit just east of the Allied-occupied zones was targeted as it was Germany's coal mining and industrial center, producing nearly 40% of all German manufacturing at the time. This was done as a way to make sure that the payments made were now largely in goods, primarily coal, rather than straight currency, as the German mark had lost heavy amounts of value the preceding years. With the French and Belgian occupation, upwards of 70,000 people were removed from their homes, making room for the troops and inbound French citizens to work in the factories. The currency was replaced by the franc, military law was established, and the border between the Ruhrgebiet and Germany was sealed. The German government had trouble resolving this crisis and encouraged a passive resistance against the occupying force. It originated within the Ruhr's organized labor movement before extending to public officials and the business community, although a few right-wing power militaries waged a more violent campaign that, that provoked French and Belgian reprisals. This, combined with civil unrest, grew into riots and coup attempts against the Weimar Republic, including the Beerhal Push. With the unrest back in Germany, the Ruhrgebiet region was subject to a blockade that decimated the Ruhr's economy and disrupt food supplies. Food riots and demonstrations became more common, and 130 civilians were killed due to these demonstrations. The worsening state of the Weimar Republic, as well as the actions of the French in the Ruhr, developed a massive amount of sympathy for their cause. This led to heavy Anglo-American pressure, once the French economy started to make a downturn in 1924, which resulted in the Dawes Plan signed in April. The plan had the reparations lowered down to 1 billion marks a year, with annual increases, and removal of the French troops from the Ruhrgebiet. It also provided a large capital influx to German industry, from a $200 million American loan, causing it to rebuild and expand, stabilizing for a time the German economy and its political atmosphere. However, the occupation did have a long-lasting effect. It, along with the Rhineland occupation, accelerated the formation of right-wing parties which were somewhat unified into the VVVD, which reached its height during the French occupation. It advocated policies of uncompromising monarchism, corporatism, and opposition to the Versailles settlement. However, it lacked internal unity and funds, so it never managed to unite the right before it faded away by the late 1920s, as the Nazi party emerged, but that will be covered in a future video.